Welcome back to another PyTorch Lightning tutorial. In this one, we will build from the previous tutorial where we implemented the Lightning module. Now we will try to put it together in a nicer way with the trainer of Lightning so that we will see how the training step and the validation step and the test step that we did, how that actually integrates. So what we will do first is we'll copy this and we'll um, just copy the folder into a new one called to Lightning Trainer and we will do uh, open that up. So this is where we ended off from the previous tutorial. Uh, here we just wrote another NN uh, with lightning module instead of our uh, NN module. And in fact, you know, we can remove this. So we just have this one. Uh, and we implemented the training step, validation, test step, and we put it into a common step here to make it a little bit cleaner. We did a predict step, uh, but we're not actually using any of that. So that's the goal for today, which is to actually use that. And basically what we want to uh, remove, and this can also be seen as sort of boilerplate code, right? This is something you will write for every project. Basically, you will see this for epoch and range of num epochs for batch, and you'll do all of this, uh, these things, this zero grad, lost backwards, dot step. Uh, and there's a cleaner way of doing it uh, using the a trainer. So we will do trainer is pl.trainer like this. And then on that, we can do trainer.fit and we can uh, send in our train loader and our val loader. Uh, this will change in the so, sort of the next video where we will also uh, introduce the lightning data module. Uh, and that way we can integrate it a little bit nicer. But for now, this is uh, how we do it. So we do pl.trainer. And here, first of all, you can specify accelerator. And accelerator, we can use GPU. Now, to, to, you, to specify how many sort of GPUs you want to use, you can specify GPUs, or you can use the equivalent devices. So you can set like devices equal to one. It will use one GPU. Um, uh, you can set uh, two. It's going to use two. Uh, you can specify exactly which ones if you have multiple, right? You can do zero and three, uh, etc. In this case, I'm just going to use devices equal to the first one, devices uh, zero. I think this is equivalent to doing this, but just to be, make sure. After we do that, we can specify the minimum number of epochs we want to train and the maximum number of epochs we want to train. Um, uh, we can also do things like we want to train in precision 16. So we can just write precision equals 16. Uh, there are a bunch of things you can do here. And it's really useful to be able to do things like accelerate. You can change this to TPU. Uh, and you can also do things like uh, if you're doing distributed training, you can also do like num nodes and how many you have. and I haven't tr sort of I haven't done distributed training, so I don't know uh, exactly. Um, I might do that in a future tutorial, a more advanced one maybe. But uh, sort of the one key feature of Lightning is that this is really simple to do. Similarly, as multi GPU training is, which uh, we're going to take a deeper look at and how we use deep speed and, and so on. Um, but this is the nice thing basically about lightning uh, is that it makes it super convenient and nice. So now, anyways, if we uh, try this out, we should be, oh, we should run the second folder. Uh, hopefully there are no errors now. Uh, we'll see. And now we can see that it runs. Uh, it's training. Um, it even gives us error messages as we can see. Uh, it says here, starting uh tensorboard x okay so giving some warnings uh it also says here you have a 3090 that has tensor cores to properly utilize them you should set this uh it's also warning us that we have val loader is has shuffling enabled uh, which we don't want obviously and then that num workers might be a bottleneck so th these are nice things and so we can see here that it it ran for three epochs and we can see the training set accuracy, validation set accuracy, and the test set. A little bit strange that these two are the exact same. I wonder if I made a mistake there. Uh, here on the val loader, we should use the val data set. All right, and we should not have shuffle. 
which is nice that Lightning uh, does these warnings for us. So now we've seen how this training step and the validation step integrates with the trainer. And so now we're actually utilizing this. Uh, and that's uh, really convenient and nice, and it's sort of really compact way of writing it. Let's also see some other things. You can do trainer.validate, where you can send in the val loader. You can do also do trainer.test on the test loader. Now it's important to know that this, um, you know, this can, you'll probably run this multiple uh, times, but the test sort of evaluation, you only want to run sort of when you're completely done and when you're actually deploying. Uh, but uh, just to show you how it works, there is also one other function that you can do. Uh, and I'll do uh, that in a future sort of tips and tricks video. But there's a trainer.tune where you can uh, sort of find uh, which hyperparameters you want to use. So for example, you could do uh, try to find the optimal learning rate and the what patch size to use. You could do that doing the trainer.tune. Um, so just so you know that it exists, um, and but but the most basic things, right, is fit, validate, and test. And so if we do, if we run that now, it's going to first uh, run and actually uh, train doing using our dot fit, and we're also sort of running the validation at each uh, end of our uh, epoch training. Uh, that is something you can specify, and I'll go into the definition of the trainer and dot fit. So we'll see that. But as you can see here, you can see here uh, we use uh, loss as our metric now. So you can see the after the entire epoch, we got 0.17 loss on our validation, 0.16 almost on the test loss. All right, so let's go into the trainer just to see what's in there. Here we go. So we have first of all we have a logger. That's uh, for uh, that's for TensorBoard and so on, which we're going to go into uh, at a later point. You have enabled checkpointing. You can use callbacks. Again, we're going to get into that as well. Num nodes, we already talked about for distributed training. Um, let's see, we have progress bar. We have some cool additional functions here, which is uh, overfit batches. You know, a really good, handy sort of thing you should always do before training is to make sure that you can overfit a single batch. Otherwise, you know something is wrong. And uh, Lightning sort of has this functionality that you can just, you know, overfit batches equals one, and then you might increase it to 10 or so. So this is a good sanity check. You also have other nice things like fast dev run. Fast dev run, uh, if you set that to true, it will run a couple of batches for your training, validation, and your test setup so that entire so that the entire pipeline kind of you know that the entire pipeline works so that you don't run an epoch of training and then you get an error in your validation uh epoch so you know that's a another uh important thing to keep in mind you also have these max epochs mini epochs you also have steps if you want to specify that instead max time that you want to train you can also limit your val batches uh if you want sort of quicker iterations between uh, to sort of just check. And then you have val check interval, how often you want to log, and the accelerator, we, we saw that that can be the GPU and the TPU. You have other things like strategy, which is the strategy you want to use when multi GPU training. So there are, you know, you can use data distributed parallel where it copies the model on multiple GPUs and then uh, it runs data in parallel. That's if it fits on a single GPU. But what if you have uh, a model that is too large, then you want to use more uh, sort of other techniques. And we'll get into that as well. We have precision, right? You can set equals to 16, super easy, super nice. Uh, you have a profiler, which we'll get into in another video, uh, sort of just to see what is bottlenecking, bottlenecking your code. Um, is it the data loading? Is it uh, sort of what is taking time? Uh, and then you have auto learning rate find, uh, sort of auto scale batch size. Uh, yeah, and that's sort of the basics that you have, right? And I'm trying to give you just an overview of what exists now. And we will see, uh, you know, a little bit more in detail on many of these functions. All right, so, uh, or this functionality rather. So if you look at the 
the functions that we have, we see that we have a dot fit, right? That's when we send in the model, we send in train data loaders. You can have multiple uh, valid data loaders or you send in a data module, which is what we're going to do uh, in the next one, uh, next video. You also can send in a checkpoint path where you want it to continue from. Uh, let's see else you have the validate. We saw that as well. Um, you have the dot test. Uh, we also checked that check that one and you have the dot predict which runs the uh, predict step that we uh, implemented in the previous video and then we have the dot tune which we also saw there is some things we might focus I'm not sure I haven't structured it this way but we might take a deeper look at the dot tune uh, where we can uh, see how we can do it for hyperparameter search and so on but uh, for now I will just uh, know that it exists and you can check it out for more details if you want. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the trainer. So this is what we saw here. Um, and I, um, so uh, just a quick recap of this video, right? We, in the previous one, we implemented the training step and so on. In this one, we actually saw how it integrated with the trainer and we saw how we could uh, sort of remove and simplify our code a lot by just using the pl.trainer instead. We saw how we can easily use multiple GPUs by setting devices to two, four, or eight, or whatever you want. Uh, the minimum epochs, the maximum number epochs, how you can easily change between 16, 32, and 64-bit precision, uh, depending on what you want. You can also change the accelerator to you know CPU, TPU, or GPU. All right, so that's it for this video. I uh, hope you thought that this was useful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. I'll try my best to answer them. And uh, in the next video, we will go into and understand how the Lightning data module works. And so um, that's what's next. And for that, right, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to remove these things right here and put them in the data module, which will simplify our code even further and make it more modular. All right. Hope to see you in the next video.